Hi there, welcome to this episode of my 10 minute moan and in this one I'd like to talk about a story that's shown up in the Daily Record today about the SNP demanding other parties um, support them with a unit, a more min uh, another minimum unit price hike for alcohol in Scotland but that's not actually the reason for this video which is my second today because I've done my nut in twice today so it's, it's actually the the irony, the total irony of what the SNP are asking people to do, other uh, parliamentarians, because they've lost the plot and they don't expect others uh, to be held accountable. Sorry, they don't expect themselves to be held as accountable as they want other people to do, to be. So anyway, the story in the, the record by Chris McCall, their deputy political editor nonetheless, I'll put a link to this as usual in the the uh, description so you can see it because I'll probably not read it all out verbatim. Anyway, it's about the um, headline, SNP calls on all parties so to support hike in alcohol price and warns against political point scoring. There you are. Now, if anybody who isn't lived in the moon for the last for a couple of months will be totally aware of the political point scoring that this party thought they should do during COVID. But now... They're telling us, what, two or three weeks after this became apparent due to the COVID inquiry um, investigation and the uh, uh, evidence that we all heard, where they were quite clearly politically point scoring with COVID. Now, two or three weeks later, no, oh, not to do that anymore. Politicians are not to do that, and they've just to support the SNP because political point scoring is suddenly a bad thing. Anyway, Claire Hockey claims MSPs owe it to the people of Scotland to support an increase in minimum unit pricing. The SNP has called on all opposition parties to support its plan to hike the minimum unit price, MUP, of alcohol in Scotland. Shona Robinson, that's a crackpot that can't count, who's a deputy minister, deputy first minister, and in charge of the budget. Anyway, Ms Robinson says uh, the government's intention is to rise raise the unit price from 50 to 65p from September. That's 30% with my wee brain working out. That's, that's no bad thing. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Let's, let's do that. Um, if the MSPs are vote in favour, a 12-pack of tenants lager 50 mil cans will rise from a minimum £12 to £15.60. And a normal size bottle of grouse from eighteen twenty. Is that much as for a bottle of booze? Anyone you know, there's a black market. Uh, sorry, will go up to eighteen pound twenty from its current fourteen pound minimum. Okay. Well, seeing I don't take a drink, eh? Can you afford to? The policy is broadly supported by health experts and charities supporting those harmed by alcohol. Broadly supported doesn't mean everybody, right? And it, it gives you a balance. It tells you some, try, try to justify that and then others who disagree with it. She pointed, this is Miss Robinson, the, the calculator woman. She pointed, oh, do you see the blue flashing lights there? We ambulance, hope you're well. Hope you're all right, darling. Um, she pointed to evidence given by Alcohol Focus Scotland, which estimates suggests raising the MUP to 65p could save 800 lives and prevent 10,000 hospital admissions. The increase in MUP is almost certain to pass as it will be supported by SNPs and Greens, who have got a majority of Hollywood anyway, but it will probably be opposed by the Conservatives. Robinson previously admitted the policy was not the magic bullet in terms of improving health and accepted access to specialist treatment services remaining for vital Scots addictions. Well, if that ain't this magic bullet... What are you doing it for? It comes as deaths from alcohol in Scotland are at a 14 year high. This is not a new thing, MUP. They're actually implemented it a few years ago and they want to put it up. Now, if it was successful, me, you know, just being a normal guy, um, would think, well, if we've got a 14 year high on alcohol deaths, Whatever we're doing now is not really working, which would suggest that they're having the minimum unit pricing in the first place is a waste of time. So, 
you know, I, I quite like using common sense and logic when I'm trying to make decisions in my life and, you know, consider things. And I would sort of consider that this minimum unit pricing is obviously not working or we wouldn't have a 14-year high because that would suggest there's more people drinking heavily than they were before you brought their thing out in the first place because it's not been out for 14 years. Anyway, but many experts are blaming the impact of COVID lockdown on increasing consumption. That was three years ago. Hockey, she said, minimum unit pricing has made a real difference to those in Scotland who suffer harm as a result of alcohol, apart from them who died, right? It's a 14-year high. Oh, there is a, var- a vast array of evidence showing the benefits of these measures. With over 150 deaths and 411 hospital admissions estimated to have been prevented each year. Now, this is interesting because a few paragraphs above, now this is like each year they're saying 150 deaths are preventing and 411 hospital admissions. In the introduction, they said it would save 10,000 by putting it up another 30%. So we're going for. 411 appointments saved, admissions saved the now, to 10,000 be putting up a bit more. Can you see why I'm struggling with this? However, despite the near unanimous support among the medical community, the Scottish Tories seem intent on scoring political points and standing in the way of progress at every turn, withdrawing their support for a life-changing scheme which has transformed countless lives. That's what she says. That's what she's claiming. Okay, woman. Now, this is about that I stopped and went, you are genuinely having a joke here, right? Because what they're claiming is, this other party are bad because they're standing in the way of progress. And it reminded me of the, the, the bill that was put through Westminster Parliament at the time of Brexit, when we were trying to negotiate our exit strategy. Now this SNP, bear in mind that, you know, Keep a light on for us, because we're coming back to the EU. We're getting dragged out without our own consent, all that bollocks. Who you know, They're telling us that they want to be part of the EU. because they, and, and the biggest thing they wanted to do uh, remain in the EU was because of the trade, right? Now, Westminster, there was a bill going through Westminster during the negotiations, which was looking to foster a trade deal with the EU, Right? So it was put on the table, basically, should we try and go to the EU and get a trade deal with them? Now, you'd think SNP, that's right down their street, because we have to leave a light on for them, because they quite like the cuddly EU thing, right? So, when that gets to be voted on at Westminster, SNP abstained. Now, this thing, and that would have been a good thing, I think, you know, that would have been all right. If they'd done some sort of trade deal with people in Europe, that would have made sense. They abstained and refused to vote, and because of that, the bill failed. It failed by two votes. The SNP have got, what, 40 seats? Nearly 50 seats? If they'd have went in, it would have sailed through, and you would have got exactly what they wanted. But no, no good enough for the SNP, because they want to destroy, 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 to try and make independence look like a better thing. So... Don't, let, don't listen to their shite when they tell you they want to be part of the EU and it's all about trade because they had a great opportunity for the whole of the UK to have a trade deal with the EU. All they had to do was put their ass on the bench that day and say, aye, when they were asked how they were voting. But now, fast forward three or four years, they're now in a pop at the Tories because they're going to, what was it they said? Intent on scoring political points and standing in the way of progress at every turn. That, my friends, is hypocrisy of the highest order. Now, going back to this drinks thing. Oh, here's an R cracker, you know, these buzzwords, shite, the SMP word bingo that they do. All parties owe it to the people of Scotland to support all measures designed to address the harm caused by alcohol. Kind of agree with that. Next sentence. And minimum price, minimum unit pricing must remain a vital component of the Scottish Government's mission to do so. Don't quite agree with that, because of what we've talked about above. If it did work, how come we're at a 14-year record high drug deaths? That doesn't make sense to me. However, 
Test White Scottish Tory Deputy Health spokesperson said it is crystal clear that the MUP is not the silver bullet that the SNP government claim it is. Sadly, MUP, minimum unit pricing, has failed to reduce alcohol-related deaths in Scotland, which are at their highest levels since 2008. That, to me, is common sense and logic. MUP punishes reasonable drinkers and in many cases forces problem drinkers to forgo meals in order to afford alcohol. I kind of understand that. I oppose the rise, the rise in minimum unit pricing and would urge the SNP government to instead back the Right to Recovery Bill. Now, I like this, which enshrines a law, the right for treatment for alcoholism. Now, that's as much of the story I'm going to read. So let me just get rid of the laptop and we'll get back on it. Right. So, this thing that the Tories are suggesting, this Right to Recovery Bill, would give people with an addiction, because that's a horrible thing alcoholism is, it's an addiction, a right to, for treatment for that addiction. Now, I've, I'm fortunate that I, I, I've never had any addiction issues. I've had some things in my life that I quite like doing, but when I went, you know what, I don't really want to do that anymore, I stopped. So I've not maybe done stuff to excess through my life, but obviously not addicted because an, an addict would not be able to stop. And I know, unfortunately, through um, losing a close friend to alcoholism, that it's a horrific thing. And like every other type of addiction, it gets a hold of you. And I know fine well through personal close experiences with people, and it's maybe possibly why I, I don't take as much drink now as I used to. I'm not saying I don't drink, but I very rarely have a drink now as I've seen what it can do with people when it gets a hold of them. And I know for a fact that it wouldn't matter the price of alcohol. The people I know that have been caught by the horrible affliction of alcoholism would still drink if, if it was as dear as cocaine, right? They will find a way to fill their addiction because that's what addictions do to you. And we see numerous things through uh, people who are unfortunately get uh, substance abuse. They'll do anything. They'll tell lies, they'll steal, they'll borrow, they'll beg, they'll do anything to fill their addiction. And if you, even if you made a bottle of whiskey at 100 quid, the people with alcohol, alcohol addictions still need their, 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 their fix of alcohol. And that's why I don't think it works. And the figures stack it, uh, the, the figures sort of, you know, help me believe what I'm saying is right because we're at a 14-year uh, all-time high. It's 14 years higher drug deaths, uh, sorry, alcohol deaths, during a period where we've already got a minimum unit price. And, I, you know, I'm no expert in the field. I just know people. And, you know, if if, if whiskey's your thing and putting up to £18 a bottle makes it not your thing because you don't have £18, then you'll A, either find a way of getting that £18 or B, move to something else to give you the same fix. Whether that's cans of super lager, cider, buck faster, I don't know, right? But you'll just go and get that same hat that you need because you've got a medical infliction that you can't stop. Because that's what alcoholism is. It's having a desire that needs filled and that's through the bottle. So, two things about that story. One, the absolute irony of these decrepit people within the SNP again demanding standards of others that they don't adhere to themselves after the debacle of what they done at Westminster with the EU bill that went through, and telling no telling Scottish people, uh, the other Scottish parliamentarians, no, parliament, <laughs> parliamentarians that they've got to do this, and no, they'll be letting the people of Scotland down if you don't, if you don't agree with us. Total hypocrisy. And the other thing is, me, no expert, looking at the figures. Minimum unit pricing does no alcoholic any favours whatsoever, or would be seeing a reduction in the debts. Is that not simple enough for you? And fair play to the Tory woman who said, look, here's an alternative. Why don't we treat people? Eh? But then, treating people, that maybe costs money. Whereas MUP, there'll be a, I don't know where actually the extra money goes, but I don't think they take it in a levy. But obviously, as the price goes up, the duty and things goes up, so get more money into the coffers. And I don't see how anybody with half a brain could say that this MUP minimum unit pricing would stop anybody having a drink. Bonkers.
Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe. Have a wee chat in the comments below. You always get up a good bit of banter in there. But most importantly of all, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.